He doesn't have quite the horsepower that Fred's got with the, the barefoot truck. Fred ought to pull a whole shot and do a recovery pretty good right there going for the 100 the foot mark. Once they unhook that toy is a light truck, it's real maneuverable and it does a good job. Cars are a little smaller. They don't stand quite as high as they did a run ago. As we look down the line, the barefoot, of course, we had in competition, not quite competition like this, in a show we did on ESPN out in uh, Anaheim, and uh, that's the night that barefoot flipped. This is the new barefoot. This is the 88 version of it. Barefoot and the toy. Well, they're lined up. The crew is with their helmets on, ready to go in and jump in and unhook and get clear from the track. Setting on the line, there's Green. Schaefer pulled the wheel stand. The toy is having problems. The toy has broke problems, broken the rear end of the truck. He's pulling off the front tires only, and he's really having a trouble battling that sled down the track. That may be all of it for him. Should be an easy win for Barefoot. Makes a nice, easy turn now. Well, Fred's probably looking across track. He knows he's got this one in hand, so he won't hammer it too hard. Uh, he hammers it pretty good. And Barefoot is an easy winner. And a wheel stand as he crosses the finish line. Well, that's the style of Fred Schaefer as he lets you know that he's here to do business. Well, Fred looks back over to the toy and knows he's got a big lead. This big alcohol-burning Chevrolet motor pounding the ground. But watch Fred Schaefer. This is the kind of competitor he is. He wants to find out how the truck's working, how the motor's running. When he gets to the cars, he just nails the big motor. Watch him fly high with the barefoot truck. around the floor of the Silver Dove, you take a look at these machines. The first thing that comes to my mind is there's an incredible amount of money invested in them. Most of the monster trucks have in the six-figure range for their monster truck, and the work to keep them up is actually a daily job. Not only do these guys compete on Saturday nights and Sunday afternoons and Friday nights, but on Mondays through Thursday, when they're not on the road trucking them up and down the highways, it's time to repair the damage that was done the week before. These trucks take such a beating that the damage is just really unbelievable. It's a daily maintenance upkeep. Of course, all the shocks that are laying underneath the truck, some of them have as many as 20 shocks on them. Well, what's, what's amazing is they're so glistening clean when they get here. It takes an average of about eight hours, and that's from the time that you unload the truck, you put the big tires on it, and the rest of the time is done cleaning and prepping the truck, making sure that it's ready for competition that night, checking over anything you might have missed at the shop when you had it apart earlier in the week. It's a truly a tremendous effort, and they do do a tremendous amount of work keeping them in good shape. Another heat, Duraliner getting all set to line up. It's like heartbeat is on the other side. This is going to be a great race, real good race. The Duraliner Giant running a brand new motor, a Butch Schultz, Schultz built blown Ford motor, and he's up against the Heartbeat of America. Now, the Heartbeat of America truck is brand new. This is the first time that Brett has had this truck out, and he goes up against some hard competition in the Duraliner Giant in first round here in the Dome. So far, Bigfoot is one, Barefoot is one, and now Heartbeat of America against Duraliner. Competition continues here, Silver Dome, Pontiac, Michigan. Well, the Duraliner truck is a very well-prepared truck. They've, they've had some problems with it in the past, but hopefully those are all in the past. And see if this truck can't pull off a big win here tonight as he goes up the, against the brand-new Chevrolet truck called the Heartbeat of America. It'll be a good race. It's Ford against Chevrolet. There'll be a lot of splits here tonight. There's what they're shooting for, those crushed vehicles. And they have done them in completely, if you can imagine, all the other trucks that are still to go. You know, the cars get a little flatter, the trucks get a little faster, they get a little more air underneath them, and they will really hammer hard. How important is the pit crew, Mike? It seems like tonight, Bob, this is very important, is getting in there and getting unhooked and getting off that track. The pulling part of it has really been a difference in some of the early competition. Is it different downstairs than it is from our vantage point up here? Very much so, Bob Kirsch, because these trucks are flying very high, only about 
10 foot from where I'm standing, and it makes you wonder sometimes if they've got them all down pat. Heartbeat having some problems. Duraliner Giant is out on top. The Duraliner Giant makes a good pass. He goes past the mark. He shuts off. There's his clue man in there. He's unhooking very, very quickly. Sends him the go ahead. The heartbeat has problems, but watch this. The Duraliner Giant, I don't think he'll show any mercy. He wants to win this one for the company. Here he goes, lines up, gets back in shape. He's got to get the front tires up on the cars and off the cars. Here we go, watch out, watch out. Broke the front tire off of it right here in front of me. He has just destroyed the left front tire. Kurt Dabney has broken the left front tire as it went up in the air and crashed. And look over there on the other side. Look to the other side. The heartbeat of America has just rolled the rear axle out from under that truck. We've got monster trucks laying everywhere tonight. They're all over the place. Unbelievable competition. But Duraliner Giant with the broken left front tire has not crossed the finish line. Not that it's going to make any difference because heartbeat of America looks like it's in a couple of pieces over on the far side. There's some major damage, Mike. We need some very large wreckers. They rolled the rear end section out of the heartbeat of America truck. And we mentioned earlier it's a brand new truck. And what you're looking at or was looking at earlier are the flanges that hook the rear axle to the traction bars and the shock. It has snapped the bolts off. You can tell the bolts have snapped off the rear axle. The springs are there. The shocks are there. The flanges are gone. They're ripped out and on the rear axle. Now watch the Duraliner on this, this replay. He lines up and does a good job. He hammers it and gets it in the air. There's the truck goes up. It broke it when it hit the car. When he hit the car, the left front tire gave way on it. It pulled in a little bit. On that replay, you could possibly see the tire give way as he bumps up against the car and gets it up in the air. Kurt knows he's got problems when he looks at that tire hanging out from under it. Mike, we talked earlier in the program about expense. I would imagine you're talking major league expense right here. Very much so in several thousands of dollars and a lot of work to put one of them back together. And both these guys will have to do a lot of work. You can look. Have at you seen this before? at the rear steering section. I have never seen this kind of damage done to monster trucks in side-by-side -side racing. As you mentioned earlier, we turned the truck over out in Anaheim, California, but we're talking severe damage on these trucks, both of them, in this competition. So we've eliminated a pair of trucks from this competition early. Another question, Mike, and that's uh, Heartbeat of America was the second consecutive monster truck on that side of the track to have difficulty with the sled. Is there something uh, about the makeup of monster trucks that may make it difficult for them to pull a sled? Well, it could be the fact that that track over on the other side might be a little bit harder, and they're having some trouble getting a hold of the track with these kind of tires. This could cause the trucks to bounce, and the bouncing is what has caused the problems in the driveline on the truck. You can see there, that's off of the heartbeat of America, ripped all the steering cylinder lines, all the steering axles, completely out from under the truck and it is laying on the ground over on the far side of the track there is a man that is crushed by what has happened tonight it was the first time out on a brand new truck he is not a newcomer to the sport by no means as he campaigned the Michigan ice monster truck for a number of years he just completed this truck and now it's taking the long ride off of the front of a loader bucket. Where is the Michigan Ice Monster? You know? You're looking at parts of it right there. Next round of competition, Excalibur, on the track closest to our cameras. Samson is on the far side, and Mike Galloway is on the floor. Boy, this is going to be one great race. The young man that drives the Excalibur truck knows no fear. He will go hammer down as hard as the truck will go. Don Maples driving the Samson truck out of Huntsville, Alabama will hammer that truck. He says he built it, he can fix it, and he will go at it hard and heavy. The Samson truck supercharged alcohol Chevrolet. The Excalibur is a carbureted supercharged Chevrolet on gasoline. 
Sampson maybe with just a little bit more horsepower, but Sampson's also pulling a bigger set of tires, a six, set of 66s. The Excalibur, a little bit smaller tire. I would venture to say watch the Excalibur truck. He could very well clear all six of these cars. It's about set to go. Remember, Bigfoot and Barefoot are the two winners so far. Heart of America and Duraliner both broke down in the last heat. The toy and the monster vet have been eliminated. Look at Samson all the way in the air. Don Maples is carrying the front end. Excalibur's having a little bit of a problem. Maples is there. He stopped already. Excalibur is just now shutting down. Maples has the advantage going into this part of it. Maples makes a clear start. He's covered him by five car lanes. Maples in the air. But watch Excalibur. Watch Excalibur. He will make up the time right on this one. He made the turn. He'll straighten it out. Watch him fly. Watch him fly. Wow! Look at that! Look at that! Excalibur came from behind to win it. Don Maples almost lost his when he hit the car. Excalibur, as we talked about before, he went into the competition. When he straightened it out, he went wide open, hit the cars. He never backed out of the engine and let it fly. Watch Excalibur. Now, he's behind when he makes this turn. Maples has already gone off to the left and straightening out. But this is where the race is won right here as he turns the corner and heads it towards the cars. Wide open right there. He's on the throttle. The truck's probably doing 40 miles an hour. Look out. Look out. Look out. Unbelievable for Excalibur. So Excalibur joins Barefoot and Bigfoot in the winner's circle. The giant is the closest to us. Neil Wilson, Winchester, Virginia. And on the far side, it's Wild Stang. Cliff Starbert and his new Mustang convertible goes up against Neil Wilson and the Virginia Giant. We talked to Neil earlier. He said this was the first time he had been in this type of monster truck competition. But believe me, Neil Wilson will not let this be the last time. This man is a capable driver. We saw him earlier in his funny car break an oil line, and we know that caused him some problems. He's got a big blown Hemi under the hood. Let's see if Neil Wilson can pull off a win over Cliff Starbert. Now, Starbird's blown Mustang, Paul Wild's Stang, is a convertible, and he's very capable. It's a short vehicle. It's got a good, quick-turning radius. It's got a blower motor in it. It's going to help him on the start and over the cars. But right now, pulling this sled is going to be a very tough thing for both of them. I think Bill Wilson may have the advantage in the sled part of it, and the Mustang may have an advantage on the latter part of it. So we'll wait and see as this competition gets real close. Green light, and Bill Wilson is in the lead. The Virginia Giant. A big lead for Bill Wilson. A oh, big lead. Giant wins the sled competition. Now let's see what transpires from here to the end. Watch Steele. Cliff Starbert having problems getting unhooked. Bill looks back. Looks across. Watch Steele, though. He'll line up. Wants to make sure everything's all right. He feels like he's got a little pad. Well, he got a pad because the Mustang, the Wild Stang, took a wide turn and took himself right out of it, and the Virginia Giant is the winner. Look at Cliff! Look, Look at out. Cliff! Broke it. He broke the right rear tire off of it. The right rear tire is completely torn from the car, as is the left rear tire. He's trying to cross the finish line. We have destroyed monster truck and monster cars tonight like there's no tomorrow. If anyone has a couple of five-ton military axles laying around, Cliff Starbird and a number of other people could sure use them. Our four winners in the first heat, Bigfoot, Barefoot, Excalibur, and Virginian Giant. As we move to heat two, the car's getting a little more crushed and a little closer to the ground, not much left of that one, and you just move right on down the line. Virginia Giant, it looks like against Sampson. Sampson rolls the slack out of the chain, and this will be a very tough one. Ford against Chevrolet, Don Maples against Steele Wilson. Watch out, this is gonna be a real close race. I think the hitching is gonna be important. Both of them in wheel time. Both of them very, very close. This is where it's going to make them or break them. The Virginia Giants lose. That's the loose. 
They both make the turn side by side. This is important. Deal Wilson heads it to the straightaway. Wilson has the lead. The Virginia Giant is in the lead. Watch out. He's up. He's up. The Virginia Giant is still making tracks. The Virginia Giant takes the win. Now, Virginia Giant took the lead in the pit. Both trucks looked like they were pretty even, Mike, as far as pulling the sled the 100 feet, but they got unhooked from Virginia Giant a little quicker than they did from Samson, and then the Virginia Giant was able to use that time to win the heat. Well, Bob, we found out that the reason we're seeing these trucks in competition is that the Bigfoot truck has been disqualified. Now, we're, we're going to try to get an explanation of this before the end of the competition and we'll let you know what develops out of this situation but barefoot and excalibur now battle here with the favorite bigfoot on the sideline what's the excalibur truck now he's in the left hand lane that lane has been a terrible lane for a lot of drivers tonight but watch the excalibur truck he could be the one to beat in this round of competition Red Fred Schaefer will show no mercy. Fred Schaefer will show no mercy. He will hammer the barefoot truck if he gets away. And... Uh oh, Excalibur! Excalibur has pulled off a quicker start. This will be close to the finish line. Here Watch we go. From your vantage point, Bob. Here we go. Excalibur has the lead. Excalibur in the air. And Excalibur is the winner. Well, Bob Kurtz, my vantage point would not tell me who won that one. I think it was the Excalibur truck. It was, Mike. The Excalibur truck, that young man has really put on a driving demonstration tonight. Jim Kramer with me on trackside. Jim, what happened? Well, I was uh, officially disqualified my first run. Uh, something about a, not a clean break in the sled. My track man, which was unhooking me, I guess did not make it over the line in time before I started my forward motion. Uh, I will be officially out of the competition. Uh, I will be allowed, I think, if these guys are nice enough, let me come back and grudge race the winner. We're taking a look at it on the monitor right here, and there's Andy going in, and you've come to a halt. That's correct. But now he has to clear the track before you leave. See that white line? It'd be hard to see from here, but that white line, he has to cross that line. He came out, I saw his helmet and his arm, but he was not fully across the line. The U.S. Hot Rod Association has established that rule. And that's why we have rules. Uh, I broke one, and uh, I'm paying the consequences. But you're going to try to come back and, and run a, the winner in a, a grudge race? If uh, he's nice enough to let me run him, I sure would like to take that Ford out there and run that winner. And he's in the, the pits tonight, but he's going to try to come back and run the winner in a grudge race. Here we go now with the Monster Truck Final, the championship round, barefoot against Virginia Giants. And down to trackside and Mike Galloway. Ford versus Chevrolet. A classic confrontation for the final round. This will be very close. It could go down to the last set of cars. The, both of these have been very strong in the pulling part of it. Deal Wilson, of course, a veteran puller. Watch the Christmas tree. There's the red. Here comes the green. They're counting down. Here goes. definite advantage. The sled just got the lights wiped out. Virginia Giant takes a gigantic lead. Here comes Watch the turn. Back. Here comes Fred Schaefer. He's going to try to win it right on the last card. He'll do it. Not yet he won't. No call out there. Yet yeah, it is the Virginia Giant. That is unofficial, Mike, but upstairs it looked like the Virginia Giant won. Bob Kurtz, that was one heck of a race. Fred Schaefer went across with the front tires about three foot in the air. We're going to wait on an official's decision and see the replay and see if we can find out. Now, right here is where we really have a problem. Watch Fred Schaefer's truck. The sled runs into it, and Fred's rear tires are off the ground just a tiny bit. Watch that barefoot truck as he tries to leave. He goes out of the camera, but the truck tires were up off the ground. He spun for just a moment. Then he slingshots down, and right here is where he makes up all of his time. When he heads for those crashed cars, he is wide open and flying high. 
Now, the Virginia Giant deal does a great job. He keeps the truck well under control, keeps it down on the ground, and that's where the speed's to be made up. They both hit the cars and the ground about the same time. Bob Kurtz, I cannot tell. We'll have to wait on an official decision as to which one of those won the championship tonight. It's very, very close. It looks like the Virginia Giant took the flag, and now apparently they're flashing on the scoreboard that we may have a grudge match. The Virginia Giant against Bigfoot. I think that may have gone through, Mike. Well, I think it shows a lot of sportsmanship on the part of Deal Wilson, the Virginia Giant. As he has made the passes, didn't have to come back, but he's gracious enough to go up against the Bigfoot truck tonight. Nothing would suit him more than to win this grudge match up against the legendary Bigfoot. That way he would say he's taking it home fair and square. Jim Kramer on the inside, side closest to the camera. It's going to be close. They both have pulled the sled extremely well. They both made great turns. Deal Wilson done well over the car. Here we go. It is side by side. They are side by side. Now we'll wait on Bigfoot. We'll know his man will clear the track. Bigfoot clears the track first. Bigfoot's out on top. Deal Wilson is still at the sled. Deal has problems and cannot come back. Watch Kramer. Look out! Wow! Look at that! The Virginia Giant never got unhooked, and Kramer had Bigfoot way up in the air.